Hey there, it's Math 8, Unit 8, Lesson 13 on cubed roots, just comparing our topic here. So decide if each statement is true or false. So for the first one, we see we have the cube root of 5 cubed. So this value, this cubed, is going to cancel out the cubed root. So all we're left with is the 5. And so does 5 equal 5? Yes, it does. That's true. Here, this cubed cancels out the cube root, so those go away. So does 27 equal 3? No, it does not, so that's going to be false. Here, the cubed cancels out the cube root, so those go away. Does 7 equal 7? Yes, it does. That's true. The cubed cancels out the cube root, so 10. Does 10 equal 1,000? No, so that's false. Now the cube root is 64. We actually can figure out what that's going to be because that's going to be equal to 4 times 4 times 4 equals 64, which means the cube root of 64 is actually equal to 4. Now 2 times 2 times 2 is actually equal to 8. So that's not true. That's going to be a false statement. So yeah, you could solve that, but it becomes 4, and you could figure that out, but it becomes 8. And that's not equal, so it's not going to work out there. So looking at this one activity today, it says, what two whole numbers does each cube root lie between? So we're doing kind of some estimation here, and we're going to explain our reasoning. So here I have the cube root of 5. So I want to take what I do know. I know that, for example, I know that, that 1 cubed equals 1, and I know that 2 cubed equals 8 which means that the cubed root of 1 equals 1 and the cubed root of 8 equals 2. So the cube root of 5 is in between 1 and 8 so we would say that this is going to be between 1 and 2. Does that make sense there? Right? Between 1 and 2 for the first one. For this next one here we have the cube root of 23. So I want to think about, okay, well 1 cubed is that, 2 cubed is that, 3 cubed is 27. So that means that the cube root of 23 is going to be between 2 and 3. Okay, so that's what we'd say there. Now 4 cubed, we've already decided is 64. All right, and 5 cubed is 125. So when I get to the cube root of 81, that's going to be between... 4 and 5. And that's because, again, the cube root of 64 is 4, and the cube root of 125 is 5, so the cube root of 81 is going to be between 4 and 5. And finally, our last one here, I know that, for example, the cube root of 1,000 is actually equal to 10. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So this is a cube root of 99, 999. So it would be a little less than 10. So it would be between 9 and 10. So if you kind of talk about what it lies between, the first one lies between 1 and 2. The second one lies between 2 and 3. 3 lies between 4 and 5. And the last one lies between 9 and 10. But mostly it's just a little bit less than 10. So you want to take the ones that you're familiar with and know and help use those to help you make um, some predictions about where things are going to be. Okay? So the next activity is going to plot some values on a number line. Can I get a feel for where those are going to be at? It says here that the numbers x, y, and z are positive, and that's what they are going to be. Okay. So we want to plot x, y, and z on a number line and be prepared to share your reasoning with the class. So x is going to be the cube root of 5, okay? So x is going to be equal to the cube root of 5. Now in our last thing we talked about here, we said that the cube root of 1 was 1, and the cube root of 8 was 2. So 5 is going to be between 1 and 2. So we can put a point somewhere here, and we can call that x. That's where x is going to be, somewhere in that region. Now we also know, that's 8, we also learned that the cube root of 27 was equal to 3. 
So in this case here, if I want to get the y by itself, I take the cube root of both sides, which will eliminate this and that, and the cube root 27 actually happens to be 3, so we can put a point right there for where y is actually at. Now z cubed is a little bit different, okay? I know already that 10 cubed equals 1,000. So we know it's less than 10, okay? We're okay with that one. Now let's see what happens to 9. Well, 9 times 9 equals 81, but 81 times 9 is 9, 729, so it's still too much. So z is going to be less than 9 just a little bit less than 9, 729, it's a 700, so we can put z right about there being less than 9. So we want to use what we do know to help us figure out what we don't know. So now can we plot the next one, which is negative cubed root of 2? Well, the cube root of 2 is going to be between the cube root of 1 and the cube root of 8, isn't it, right? So we know this is 1 and this is 2. But we're talking about negative values. So it's going to be between negative 1 and negative 2 is where this is going to land. So between here somewhere, we put it down. Now I'd probably put it closer to negative 1 technically, but this is where we would put negative cubed root of 2, right about there, between negative 1 and negative 2. So those are our values all plotted there on those points. Are you ready for some more? Let's see. Diego knows that 8 squared is 64 and 4 to the cubed is 64. He says that this means the following are all true. Square root of 64 equals 8. Well, that's true because 8 times 8 is 64. So that's true. Mm, tr we'll write true right there. The cube root of 64 is 4. Well, this is true. We can see it already in his statements there. There's that statement. There's that statement. But how about this one? The square root of negative 64 is negative 8. What happens if I take negative 8 and I multiply it by negative 8? Yeah, 8 times 8 is 64, but a negative times a negative is a positive. And we can see here this is a negative value. This is going to be false. And over here, yes, the cube root of 64 is 4 like we saw there. But let's see what happens if I go the opposite way. If I do negative 4 times a negative 4 times a negative 4. Well, 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64. Got the numbers right. Now let's check our signs. Negative times negative is a positive. Positive times a negative is a negative. Negative 64 matches what I see right there, which is a negative 64. So that would be a true statement there. There's only one statement here that actually ends up being false. So be careful about that when you do play with those negative signs underneath your radicals there. So in summary, just quickly here, we would say, remember that square roots of whole numbers are defined as side lengths of squares. So square roots are side lengths of squares, okay? And we define cube roots are cubes, but, but using cubes of squares. So we find cube roots similarly. So cube roots is the uh, edge length of a cube. Okay, so those are our cube roots. The big thing here is that we can approximate the values of cube roots by observing the whole numbers around it and remembering the relationships between cube roots and cubes. So knowing what we know, we can figure these things out. A lot of times, and we'll get more to this next, next, next lesson, most cube roots of whole numbers are irrational, meaning they're not simple numbers that just stop. They end up being repeating numbers that go on for a long time, or like a long time like that. They're usually not just nice, simple whole numbers. All right, we're going to pause there, let you work on your homework, and we'll come back and check it together in just a few minutes. All right, homework time for Unit 8, Lesson 13. Find the positive solution to each equation. If the solution is irrational, write the solution using a square root or cube root notation. Okay, so the first one, we're going to take the cube root of both sides. So we're going to take the cube root of 216, which in this case here, I may not know what that is. So let's make a little chart here. 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, 
5 cubed is 125, 6 cubed is 216, and 7 cubed is 3, 3? Yep, 343. Okay? So there's lots of cube values right there. And 8 cubed, while we're at it, is actually equal to 512. Okay, there's a bunch of cube values there. So what's the cube root of 216? It's going to be right there. It's going to be equal to 6. Next one. To get the square root away, I take the square root of both sides. So I have here the square root of 15, and I leave it just like that. I can do the cube root of both sides. So what's the cube root? The cube root of 8 is equal to, shoop, there it is, 2. Here we do the <laughs> cube root of both sides. So the cube root of 343, I can look over here, and it's right there at 7. And then finally, cube root of 81, or 181. I don't see it on my list, so I'm going to leave it just like that. All right, and that's it for that side. For each cube root, find the two whole numbers that lie that lies between okay so the cube root of 11 cube root of 11 well 11 is going to be where it's going to be between looking up here 11 is between 8 and 27 so where we say it's between 2 and 3 80 is right here between 64 and 125 so we'd say it's between 4 and 5 120 is also between 64 and 125, so we'd say it's between 4 and 5. And 250 is right here between 216 and 343, so it's between 6 and 7. Number 3, order the following values from least to greatest. Okay, well, alright, what do we know so far? The cube root of 530, okay, if I look up here, 512 is the cube root of 8, so this is going to be a little bit more than 8. All right, 8 plus. The square root of 48. Well, I know that the square root of 49 equals 7. This is going to be a little less than 7. All right, 7 minus. Pi is equal to 3.14. Square root of 121 is equal to 11. Cube root of 27 is equal to 3. And 19 over 2 can be rewritten as a decimal as 9.5. So, what is our smallest number? Well, our smallest number is here, the 3, which is going to be cubed root of 27. That's 1. The next smallest is pi. The next smallest, 3, 3, we're going to go with the 7, which is square root of 48. Next up, we have the cubed root of 530. Next up, we have 19 over 2. And finally, we have the square root of 121. Okay, so that's that one. Next, we want to find each variable to the nearest tenth. So let's see what we have here. We have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So here we go. For the first one, we're going to do 2.5 squared plus x squared equals 7.5 squared. 2.5 squared is 6.25 plus x squared equals 7.5 squared is 56.25. I'll subtract 6.25 from both sides so that x squared equals 50. x then will equal the square root of 50, which I don't have an answer for that one. I know that the square root of 49 equals 7. It's a little more than 7, so you might say x is somewhere about maybe 7.1. Just as an estimate there, what that could be. Let's look at the next one. We have 7 squared plus f squared equals the square root of 78 squared. All right, that's my hypotenuse. So 49 plus f squared equals 78. We subtract 49 from both sides. So that f squared equals 29. And then f then equals the square root of 29. The so 29 comes between the square root of 25, which is 5, and the square root of 36, which is 6. So it comes in between there. It's 4 more than that, and it's 7 more than less than that. So it's a little more this way. Maybe somewhere approximately, we could say f is somewhere about maybe 5.4, something like that. Might be a good approximation of what that might be. 
I say 5.4 because halfway between this would be 30, you know, about 30.5. So this is a little less than that, so we have 5.4. And for our last one here, we have to find the value of D. We can find that by first of all finding what this length is right here. And we can call this one X for right now, okay? So let's find the X value first of all. We can say that 8 squared plus X squared equals 11 squared. So 64 plus X squared equals 121. We subtract 64, so that X squared equals 57. So X equals the square root of 57, okay? So that's the length right here, square root of 57. This is also the square root of 57 right there. So the whole length of D is square root of 57 times two. So what do you know about square root of 57? Well, I know that the square root of 49 equals seven, the square root of 64 equals eight, and this is somewhere in between there. We can see this is subtracting seven this way, and this is adding, in this case here, eight. So maybe about 7.5 is a good estimation for, for what the value of x is gonna be. 7.5, 7.5, if we add those up, we end up with 7.5 times 7.5, which is about 15, so D is about 15 as my approximation there. Is it perfect? Nope, it's an approximation. And finally, number five, a standard city block in Manhattan is a rectangular measuring 80 meters by 270 meters. It's a rectangle like so. A resident wants to get from one corner to the other, okay, that contains a part. She wonders about the difference between cutting across the diagonal and going through the park versus going around. How much shorter would her walk be going through the park? So on the outside, if I went 80 and 270, that's 270 plus 80, which is 350 if she walked this way. So what is this length going to be? Well, we do 80 squared plus 270 squared equals x squared. Well, 80 squared is going to be 6,400. 270 squared is 72,900 equals x squared. We combine those together to get 79,300 equals x squared. So the square root of 79,300 equals x. Now, what does that equal? That is approximately 282, approximately. Okay, you can use a calculator and figure that out if you need to. I did not do that by hand. So in terms of how much shorter it would be, we can do then the difference between this value and this value. So 350 minus 282, and we have here about 68 meters is about the difference. And that's it. Okay, that's it for today. Have a great day, and we will see you next time.